Masters of the Night, this is a cooperative and solo friendly game about vampires and yes, the good thing is that you are the vampires, you control a clan of vampires and trying to establish your dominance in a city where however there are enemy agents that are trying to expose you and then also just well to kill you that's what they do you can recruit minions you can use a lot of cool special powers blood is a currency that will be very important to you so that's that's, that's the general idea and again fully cooperative and you can also play solitaire which is actually how I played it I controlled two vampires and I tried to beat the game the game takes place on a city created by uh, a grid of 3x3 three three tiles, which you see here. The railway station always goes there in the top left corner. The other tiles are shuffled to create a random grid. We have events, uh, event cards. One will be drawn every turn. And also, the, uh, the deck of event cards will represent your timer. You need to complete your mission before the end of the game. But do not worry, the deck is going to be a lot thinner than this. Matter of fact, you choose how thin you want it, and the thinner it is, the harder the game becomes, because you have less time. So you will only use a small number of these event cards every turn, which is really good, because it will give you a lot, a lot of variety there. The grid that you see on top tells you uh, how many uh, how many enemy agents, uh, vampire hunters, are going to be added to the board and where? And what those hexes mean exactly depends on number of players, meaning how many you place there and other things. Plus, you have an event here at the bottom. So you will have your deck of event cards. You're going to have relics representing powerful items that you can find. Very important, of course. And then we have... The Veil Tracker, this is a way of keeping track of how stealthy your vampires are. You really don't want to be noticed too much. And so, uh, incidentally here, there's a different player aid based on the number of players. And I like how that information is integrated within uh, what appears to be uh, the headlines, headlines from a newspaper. Really cool. But the Veil, again, represents how uh, well hidden your vampires are going, when it goes down because of game effects, it's bad. Matter of fact, if it ever reaches zero, uh, you lose the game. That's one of the ways in which you can lose the game. Also, being on one side or the other side of this divide here will change things as it changes the number of enemy agents, vampire hunters placed on the board. And then we have our vampires themselves, uh, each represented by a miniature that goes on the board. And then you have a player raid here that tells you uh, the ability, the, the general abilities of the vampire, this part is the same for everybody, plus unique abilities for each vampire. Each vampire also has a seal or sigil that you're trying to place on the board and then each vampire has a number of blood tokens. When it goes down to zero, you're temporarily dead, but not out of the game because, hey, this is 2022. We don't kick people out of the game anymore. We don't have player elimination. The penalty is that being dead or temporarily dead, being drained, as it is called in the game, will reduce your veil because people notice that you died and then you're not dead anymore. How about that? That was weird. The action points uh, is the main way in which you will perform actions uh, and what is interesting is that not all actions are available at the beginning of the game. So the actions that you see here on top of the player rate are always available and this token here keeps track of your kill count which sometimes you will increase by well eliminating enemy agents uh, from the board and some of the times by performing actions uh, that still represent in a more abstract way the fact that you are uh, you're killing people it's also a form of like leveling up because as your kill counter moves down then more of the uh, actions become available the wild hunt for example uh, allows you to recover a lot of blood but since you went on a on a hunting spree then people notice and that's when your veil tracker goes down ultimately you want to go all the way down here to unlock the ability to place your seal on the board you take that action, also, sorry minion, um, then you need to be eliminated. Minions are resources that you can place on the board and it will help you 
uh, for different game functions. Ultimately, your purpose is this. You're trying to level up your vampires until they all unlock the ability of placing their uh, seals on the board. Then you'll spend actions to do precisely so, to place those seals. When that happens, uh, you are ready to perform a great ritual. And that means that all the vampires, wherever they are, they need to meet at the same in the same spot. There needs to be a number of minions uh, equal at least to the number of vampires. So again, minions, sorry, you're gonna participate not in a way that's fun for you. And at that point, you can take the action of, of performing the Great Ritual. And you win the game. That is what seals your control over the scene. So again, to win the game, you need to level up, place your seals, and perform a great ritual. You win the game. You lose the game if your veil goes too low or if you run out of time as determined by event cards. Now, more specifically, more in detail, turn by turn, each turn starts with a day phase, which is not always particularly good for you. You're taking your nap and enemy agents and minions are doing things. During the day phase, you will simply look at each a section of the board and you will resolve effects that are marked with that symbol. That indicates those are effects that take place during the the uh the day and that's basically when your minions and the agents are well the minions working for you to help you and the agents working to uh, go against you for example in this district here the museum at the start of the day if there are more minions than agents in this district i draw a relic card and so right now that wouldn't happen but booyah if that's a situation when we're resolving that that happens it's very thematic that it's usually minions and agents that determine the outcome of the day phase however the day phase is also where the vampires attack you no, sorry the, the agents attack you if there are at least three agents where your vampire is then they reveal themselves if they weren't yet and they attack you and you have to fight also, if an enemy agent is placed in an area with a vampire or and or minions during the day, then the veil goes down because again they notice. So that's how you resolve the the day phase. Then is the night phase where the um, where the players will take their actions. And again, it's it's action points. If you play Pandemic or a lot of other games in the last 20 years or so, you have a sense of what that means. So for an action, you can move to an adjacent space, uh, and adjacent here is orthogonal. You can expose agents, again, if you're in the same space as an agent that is still concealed, you can flip it that way. You can fight agents, recruit a minion, uh, which is particularly expensive, takes two action points. And I should mention this. You only have two action points per turn, so if and that's really key to, to the flow of the game. That means if you're recruiting an agent, uh, recruiting a minion, there's nothing else you're gonna do that turn. Uh, you can also use your if, use a night effect if the location in which you are has an icon with a night effect. So, for example, if you are in the city park, uh, then you could use an action for a night effect. And as would be this, you will use a die to perform those actions. And we'll talk about the dice in a minute. I know you want to know about that. And then again, other things will happen. Uh, each each character also has a unique blood ability that costs, as you can see, not actions, but costs blood. So you can spend blood to perform that action there. And that's just one. And this would be another one, for example. Plus another ability that is open later. Again, as, you, as I said, later you will unlock more things as your kill count increases. How about combat and how about those dice? Now, this is the interesting idea. Uh, in this game, you will use dice, but you will not roll dice all the time. You have a dice pool, uh, and the number of dice in the dice pool depends on the number of players. When the dice pool is empty, you roll them and you place the dice in your dice pool. Now those dice are available to use. So basically, I see what I'm going. I see what I have there. And so, if I want to go and attack 
an enemy agent, I will use a die and I will choose which one I want to use. Another, and only when uh, the dice pool is empty, only then will you re-roll the dice. But again, then you may have be, you may have time to see what's there and to influence it before you use it. I mean, if you're caught and they attack you, then you have to select dice. And if you're in the middle of a combat, you don't have enough dice, then you have to re-roll in the middle of a combat. But usually you will have a chance and you will want to, <laughs> it's not just possible, control the dice. Because there are actions and effects that will allow you to increase the result of a die. So that's pretty cool. And just know that low numbers are bad. So if there is a 1 or a 2 that is rolled there, that's pretty bad. And that's why an action such as the city park is so important. Because it allows me, say, by spending a 1 or a 2 from the dice pool to increase the veil by one, which is good in itself. And also now when I fight, I don't have to use that too. I'm not gonna get stuck with that. And maybe again, next time I use it, I'll reroll it, maybe get something better. So when you fight, it's pretty simple. If a die with a one or a two is used to fight from the dice pool, then you lose the fight and you lose a blood. If a 3 or a 4 is used, you defeat the enemy agent and you also lose a blood. If a 5 or a 6 is used, then you, you defeat the enemy without losing blood. And losing blood is not so terrible, but again, being temporarily dead, the main penalty is, again, you lose the veil. So this is the general idea. Day phase, when you go through the day effects and possibly resolve combat and decrease the veil depending on things that happen. Then players spend two action points to perform actions on the board, possibly resolving combat, using relics, also different things. And again, ultimately you want to level up by killing uh, agents to perform the raid ritual and win the game. Masters of the Night is a very good game, especially playing it solo, because I think in that mode uh, you can fix some complaints that I've seen uh, people sharing online, and we'll talk about that. But definitely Masters of the Night is a fun uh, copy game with a really cool theme. I like the idea of these com uh, of these uh, teams of, uh, of vampires not fighting against each other, but ganging together against the real evil creatures, which are humans. Uh, the theme is really cool. Uh, Halloween is coming up, so I think it's also very timely. And in terms of gameplay, of course, it seems to be part of a lineage that comes from Pandemic, and that's perfectly fine. It is Pandemic that made Copity Gaming so popular in the last 15 years or so, and gave us the idea of mm -hmm. Copity Games as games where the, the system will place negative, uh, dangerous elements on the board, and if they concentrate too much, there are further negative effects, and then you spend action points to both deal with that, keeping the the enemy pieces at bay and also trying to achieve other objectives. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's a vast family. Recently also played The Spill, which actually feels even closer to Pandemic in essence. And there are other games that do cooperation differently. But again, nothing wrong with a game that has a vague, still very vague family resemblance with Pandemic, a very cool theme, and that has a lot of unique individual different elements. I like the leveling up, that not all actions are available at all time. That really creates an interesting narrative there. As you see, your shy little weak weak uh, vampires become more and more powerful. Then you definitely have the element of cooperation where you want everybody to level up. It's not enough to give all the resources to one uh, player or one vampire because you need everybody to be able to place their, their seal on the board to be able to win. And I like coordinated actions. Uh, yes, I send somebody in, uh, I move and I and I expose an enemy agent that was concealed and I move somebody else in there and that other person fights. I use, I need those minions to produce good game effects during the day so that then I can take advantage of those such as manipulating the dice. That's an effect that they can do for you and you really need to make sure that they, you, you keep your minions happy, healthy, give them insurance, free weekends, dental, you want them to be happy because you really need them during the day to manipulate your dice pool. And the deal with the dice pool is very nice. I, on top of my head, I can't think of another game that I played recently that has that similar idea that uh, there is randomness. 
the moment they are rolled, but you can do so many things around that to minimize the effect, including, well, make sure you don't get caught in a big fight when your dice pool is low. Make sure that try to use other game effects, reduce the dice pool, then you roll it, and then before you use it, you try to do something else. It's a really cool idea. I like it a lot. I hope I can see something similar in more games. Now, um, one thing, one thing that I've seen people complaining about this game online is that they feel like they don't get to do much. They feel like uh, some turns uh, there is there isn't a lot to do, and I totally see how that could happen. If you're playing multiplayer and you control only one vampire and that's why I never had that problem because again if one vampire if I move a vampire to expose an enemy agent and then I move another vampire to kill it I feel like I did something if I was just one player doing one of those two things maybe I would feel that that wasn't all that much and again I'm controlling multiple players as a solo player, so one of my vampires generates a minion and the other vampire maybe walks away with that minion and attacks somebody. So I was always doing something uh, every turn, uh, every player's turn, that'd be me, not necessarily every vampire's turn. So again, I think that can also be fixed if you're playing multiplayer and each player has at least two vampires, which is totally possible, the rules uh, make a point that the number of vampires does not have to be the same as the number of players. But I also see how many people like to have a connection with only one character, and it's it's cleaner that way, you only have to worry about one thing. Uh, it's more intuitive. But I think that that may be when the, when the problem emerges, because there definitely is the ratio between upkeep and agency, at least in some turns, can be a little bit uh, unbalanced towards upkeep. You have to go through all of those game effects, resolve all of those game effects, flip a card from the board, flip a card, add more people, uh, adjust the veil because of where people were at, that possibly resolve combat. And then maybe after go through all that, my action is to place a minion on the board. And then maybe have the four players go, other three players go. Um, and then we do all that upkeep and maybe I move and I expose an agent. I see how that, if you have one, one uh, vampire only, that can fill into the climatic. So just a warning that that may be the case. The game may feel that way. Doesn't have to be if you're playing solo in any case with multiple vampires. In, in that case, again, I like the coordination. I like the fact that those agents, you get a sense of where they are, but you need to expose them before you can murder them. Uh, and I feel that the level of agency increases over time as you gain relics that give you more actions or different things to do. Um, some of those are really fun to then trigger and to implement. I'll let you discover those. So, but uh, even with that, sometimes I do wish that you had a little more actions that turns like I wish I had like three actions and I wonder maybe it's possible again I mentioned the spell which I played recently which is a copy game with action points and you have a default number of action points but you can use an extra action point for a penalty and maybe here you can say that you had two free action points every turn and then you spend once per turn you can spend a blood token to get a third action maybe that will help just, just an option, not to make the game easier, but if you feel that that the game doesn't give you enough agency between periods of upkeep. So in case that's uh, that's a suggestion, a possibility, an option, which I haven't personally explored because I didn't feel like. Because to me, it works as is because I play with multiple players. So Masters of the Night. It is definitely a very good game, one that I enjoy very much, one that possibly could be great, not just very good, if uh, the upkeep was somewhat simplified and there was more agency for the players, but as is, is a perfectly fun game and one that may be a good option for that upcoming Halloween party.